seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. We were fortunate and blessed to get what we've got and uh, worked hard for it and just super happy about it. So this is the new digs. Hope you all like it. You guys will be seeing me here a lot. I'll come to you a lot doing videos on how to instructional stuff in here. What I want to talk to you about today is a great fall technique. It's a staple like it has to be in your arsenal for the fall. Shallow cranking. If you don't do shallow cranking in the fall, you are really missing out. These fish are doing nothing but chasing shad all fall long, and you really have to try and mimic that shad. And there's not much better to cover a bunch of water and to mimic a shad and, and get that fish to chase it down and react to it than a shallow water crankbait. There's so many baits out there. There's so many good crankbaits out there. Um, I, I really try to look for one that makes a difference. You know, fishing Lake Fork, some of the most pressured fish in the world, they see every bait known to man. So I really want a bait that's gonna be durable. It's gonna do something different to stand out from the others, and I can depend on the quality, and I can depend on the action of that bait to set me apart from other fishermen on the lake. I used to fish the uh, Strike King 1.5, 2.5 a lot. Even up till just here in the last few months, I fished it a lot. That is a good bait. There's nothing wrong with that bait. I personally have broke several of them. That's a big pain for me. Is when stuff starts breaking down and becomes a reliability issue, it costs you a lot of time on the water. Therefore, that's a big negative for me personally. It's a good bait, it catches a lot of fish. I mean, it's one of Bassmasters Classic. It's an awesome bait. So I'm not here to knock that bait. What I am here to do is tell you about a bait that I'm using now that I feel like is a complete difference maker. I hate the word game changer, but this is a game changer in shallow water cranking, for sure. This is the Six Sense Movement 80X. This is the original one. Uh, it's been out a little over a year, maybe almost two years now. I just started fishing with it this past winter. I missed the fall bite on it last year, but I can tell you after having it for part of a winter, a spring, a summer, and now starting in the fall, there is no other shallow crankbait like this. It is, the action on it is incredible. The vibration is like a chatterbait on steroids. Uh, it's also the most weedless, snag-free, however you want to term it, crankbait that I've ever put in my hands. It can go through anything from just a little twiggy, bushy, like buck brush or something like that. Got a bunch of small limbs. It just it goes right through it. It never stops. Or you can run it into like some big, wide, standing timber. And when it hits that hard timber, it's got such a hard action and wobble. When it hits it, it kicks way out to the side. And really causes a lot of reaction bites. That's actually my favorite way to fish it is to find big standing timber and slam it into there, reel it into there hard as I can, and it'll bounce way out to the side. It's usually when I get most of my bites and my biggest bites as well. So this is a dynamic bait. Um, you know, the reason that I really like six sense lures is because I know with every bait that I get from them, and yes, I'm on a little bit of a pro staff deal with them, but I can assure you, I still pay good money for these baits. I still pay a lot for these baits. I still pay as much or more than I would for other brands of crankbaits to get these baits. The reason why I do, number one, paint job is going to be second to none. Casey Sobzak is an incredible painter. That's how he started his business. So every paint job that you get on a six inch lures bait, second to none. It's going to be as good as any out there. The second thing is the components and the quality of the bait on everything they make from the crankbaits, the new top waters, um, the old crankbaits, the lipless baits, it doesn't matter, whatever they make, it's the new jigs, everything that they do is so quality that you don't have to worry about it. You pull it out of the package, tie it on and fish, 
guarantee you it's ready to go every single time. Never had a flaw in it, never had any issues with any bait from them in any way. That's a big deal to me. So that's why I use the Six Sense Movement ADX, the fact that it has a different action, a different vibration, and a different ability to be able to bounce off cover and come through cover without hanging up. That's a big deal when you're guiding because a lot of these customers that you get, maybe they haven't thrown a shallow crankbait in the type of cover that we do out here. So to have a bait that can kind of help them get through all that stuff, man, it's just, I can't say enough about it. I know I'm rambling on and I apologize, but I'm just in love with this bait. Like if you shallow crank, you have to have this bait. Um, so that's the bait I use for my shallow cranking. Now this one right here, it only goes about two foot deep on, you know, we like to throw it from 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. So on Lake Fork, this thing's only going to go about two feet with the line that we're throwing out there. What Six Sense Lures did, which I'm very excited about, was this year they came out with the Movement L7. Same bait, same body style, but different lip. Now, the L7, which is square bill, it will go deeper. It'll go four to six feet. So it's about a five foot diver. So that now has completely eliminated, you know, I told you guys I was still fishing the 1.5 and 2.5 till just a few months ago. Well, this is why. Once they came out with this, that completely eliminated the 1.5 and 2.5 for me, simply because now I have something that can hit that same depth range. Before this thing wouldn't quite get to that depth range. So when I needed to get down to four foot, five foot, I couldn't do it with the Movement ADX. Now that I have the Movement L7, I can get down there, I get the same kind of deflecting qualities, I get the same quality paint job, same quality components, ready to go out of the box, all that good stuff. So that's my, uh, my new square bill right there, Movement L7. It's brand new, I haven't really ever fished it very much. So far I'm loving everything I see, just like I did on the Movement ADX. Okay, as far as colors of crankbaits, you guys, if you've watched any of my videos, probably learned by now I'm really simple on colors um, I try to not overthink colors I, I don't I think that we put a little too much credit in some of the details there are subtle differences that make a difference but for the most part you know a few basic colors get you going get you build your confidence that's what you need to do so number one number one staple that I'm always gonna have is gonna be a shad pattern a good shad pattern you know in Texas most of the shad that we're going to have, we're going to have a white or silvery grayish, you know, light gray, whitish type colored side. And they're going to have like a gray, blue, or darker colored back on them. And a lot of them will have a little bit of a yellow or chartreuse type stripe in the middle. So, this is Shad Drone is the name of that color. And it mimics that to a T as you can see. On the new L7, this one's called Shad Glow. And I don't know if it'll show up on the camera or not. But it's almost an iridescent type bait where it fades from a, a pale whitish color to a pink to a blue back. And it's a good shad mimicker as well. Basically the main thing I'm concerned with is white on the bottom, blue, bluish grayish on the top. That's what I have to have in my shad pattern baits. The second color that I always keep no matter what, this is old school color, old school staple. Every crankbaiter from way back when has always had this color in their box and there's a reason. Uh, just a chartreuse black back and what that does is that gives a really good contrast on a two-tone bait so when you got two tones of colors when that baits run through the water as it shakes and vibrates that body's rolling side to side and what that will do is just flash that color and it really makes that color pop when you have two tones like that and that baits rolling through the water it gives off a lot of flash to the fish and brings them in from a long distance so when I have dirty water you know, slightly stained water with a really overcast day. I'm gonna pick up that chartreuse black bat. Crawfish colored crankbaits. Once we get to say December, all the way through the first half of March for where I am, this is a really good color. I mean, it doesn't matter if you've got crystal clear water or if you've got dirty water. You can pick up a crawfish colored crankbait and go to work and it catches some monsters at times. This is probably my favorite overall crawfish color, and that's Wild Lava Craw. And then you see it's just a, it's an orange pattern with some red, and it's got the gold stripes. That's probably my favorite craw pattern right there. This one right here is called Lava Truce. It's got a little bit darker back, and it's got that chartreuse bottom. So again, kind of the two-tone situation, that gives off a little bit more flash. 
I have caught plenty of good fish on this one as well. Um, if the water's a little bit dirtier, I tend to lean towards the darker one. When the water's clear, just normal, you know, our normal kind of mid-stained water, then I'll throw the wild lava crawl. That's my normal crawfish color right there. And the last color. This is my fourth one. This is kind of a specialty deal. So this is kind of like, you know, secret. Don't tell everybody. So you guys make sure and share this with all your friends. When you get to post spawn or when you get to a bluegill spawn, a bluegill colored shallow diving crankbait can be deadly. Okay? So you definitely want to pick that up and have you a couple of bluegill patterns. You know, around East Texas, the kind of bluegills that we got are, are brim, I know what everyone calls them, brim, bluegill, perch, however you want to call it. They have like a, a greenish darker top and a tan brown belly. And that's kind of what this color uh, mimics here. Forgive me, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what the name is on this. Six Sense Lures has several different uh, brim or bluegill patterns. You just check them out and uh, pick the one that applies best to the brim bluegill in your area. So that's it on colors. That's uh, four I go with. It's really the only four that I ever use. There's nothing else even in that box, to be honest with you. All right. Let's talk about rod and reel and line setup. For my rod and reel, uh, you guys know by now I'm a Dobbins guy. Uh, this is a big crankbait that's moving ADX. It's got such a hard vibration, it really pulls a lot of water. There's a lot of resistance compared to your standard square bill. On just a regular square bill crankbait, I would go <clears throat> with a 703. But on this crankbait, because it's a little bit bigger and it pulls a lot harder on you, I want a 704. I want something with a little bit more meat on it to make it easier to control that bait, to feel that bait, and to work it through the cover. So, Dobbin 704, and this is the Fury series. This is their low end series. If you guys, I know that a lot of us out there on a budget, you know, Dobbin draws are great. If you want a premium rod, go buy the Champion, Champion Extreme. They're second to none. Uh, but a lot of us are uh, balling on a budget, for lack of a better term. And being a guide, I'm one of those as well. You know, I've got to provide equipment for everybody and I've got to keep it reasonable price-wise. That's just the way it is. So, if you haven't tried the Dobbins Fury Series, definitely give it a shot. Uh, this rod right here is uh, $109.99. Check this rod out. For $109, you absolutely cannot find a better rod. It is as good as it gets. It's so light and it's so easy to use, but yet it's such a good rod. Good feel, good durability, all that good stuff. Um, on reels, uh, I don't like to really get into real brands. It becomes, you know, a Ford Chevy debate. You know, I like dial reels, but the main thing is on this, you want to have, for me, on shallow cranking, I need a medium gear ratio. I don't want a five to one because I don't want that bait to be moving that slow. I don't want a seven to one because I don't want that bait to be moving that fast. I really want that middle retrieve. I want to move that bait fast enough that it gives it that erratic hunting, darting action but I don't want it to go so fast that it just burns across, you know, above the fish, above the cover. I want to have just a good medium retrieve. Therefore, I use a 6.3 to 1 gear ratio on all my shallow cranking. For line, you know, we go 15 to 17 pound. I use Cigar Red Label for my fluorocarbon. Always use 100% fluorocarbon when I'm cranking, no exceptions. Um, you can definitely do 12, even 10, and that will get that bait a little bit deeper. On Lake Fork, we catch some big fish, but mainly we've got a lot of really heavy cover, hardwood, brush, grass, all that kind of stuff. So for that reason, that's why I use the 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon or shallow cranking where I do it. It may work better for you to do 12 pound where you're at. So let's talk about techniques and tactics and how I go about fishing this thing a little bit. You know, fishing shallow crankbaits is really one of the more simple things you can do. It's somewhat like, you know, just driving the bus. You throw it out there and you drive that thing, they going to get on it or they ain't. You don't have to slam the hooks at home. I'm guilty about that, but you don't have to. Um, sometimes it's better to even just let them kind of load up on the rod and hook them get the bait a little better and you won't jerk it out of their mouth. <clears throat> as far as how I fish the bait, the main thing that I can tell you guys as far as the tip goes is a couple things. Number one is make long casts, okay? Uh, you want to get that as much line out there as possible. That's going to help get that bait down to its true depth and stay at that striking, that, that depth zone, that strike zone that you wanted at for a longer period of time. So make sure you make a long cast 
and then point that rod down. When you're fishing that crankbait, you don't want to be reeling that bait in up here. You want to have that rod pointed down, that tip just above the water. That's also going to help that bait stay down. The higher you hold your rod tip, the higher in the water column that bait is going to ride. So if that bait performs to its true capabilities, you want to point that rod tip down right at the edge of the water and reel it just like that. One tip that I can tell you guys is when you're fishing these crankbaits, when you have standing timber or stumps sticking up out of the water, maybe water's up a little bit, but when you can see standing timber or wood of any kind, uh, what you want to do is you want to throw that bait, cast it to where it goes past that cover, you know, just a few inches to six or eight inches on the side of it, cast well past it, and let's say that we throw, there's stuff out there, and we throw it to the right side of it by a few inches. What you want to do is take that rod, turn that, bait, turn that rod to the left, crank that bait, and get it over there to where you can run it in. You want to intentionally hit that cover. You want to hit as much wood, as much brush, as much dock pilings, grass. You want to hit as much of it as possible because the vast majority of my bites come when that bait hits something and bounces, or hits something and backs up, or hits that grass, hangs up, and then I jerk it out of there. That's the other thing too, when you're fishing grass, you get this bait going, 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 and it hits that grass and gets watered up and balled up in that grass, don't just keep reeling. <coughs> you want to take that rod, put a little bit of slack in your line, grab it with both hands and pop it violently as you can. Just you know, jerk it as hard as you can with a little bit of slack so that you're snapping that bait. And a lot of times it'll snap free from that grass and as it does, it'll, you know, wobble and drop forward a little bit and go back down and you'll get a lot of bites like that. That's that trap bite that you guys always hear about, about ripping it out of the grass. Same thing, you can do the same thing with square bills, shallow running crankbaits. Um, you know, that's about it, really. It's, it's not complicated. It's kind of a chunk and wine technique. There's not that many really subtle changes to it. The main thing is to make sure you're in the right depth zone where the fish are, and you hit as much cover as possible to get all those deflecting reaction bites that you can get. Check it out, try it out. Definitely try that movement ADX. I'm telling you guys, I don't often pump one particular bait this hard. That's a different bait. There's not another one like it. So definitely give it a try. And let me know how it goes. Comment down below. If you guys, sit, you know, if you guys get, catch a, a good fish on one of these moving eight eggs, send me a picture. My phone number's in the video. Text me a picture. Post it in the comments below. You know, let me know. I want to hear about you guys' success too. That's why I'm doing this. I'm trying to help everybody learn to fish. You know, I'm a lot like you guys. I'm a guide now. I do some guiding, and I'm trying to make a living fishing. But I was y'all. You know, <laughs> I was the kid that walked, woke up before everybody on Saturday morning grabbed a worm bag and a rod and walked to every pond in the neighborhood where I live. That's exactly how I grew up. Um, I'm, I love fishing. I always have and I love to hear if you guys have some success. And for me, if I can help you all a little bit, that's why I do what I do. So give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up right there. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit that subscribe button and it'll notify you every time I post a new video. And uh, appreciate you guys' support. Appreciate you watching. If I can ever do anything to help you, give me a call, shoot me a text, let me know I'm here for you. And we're going to keep making this channel what you want because that's what I want. So, until next time, appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Go catch some fish. See y'all next time. Movement ADX, six cents. Pretty sure she likes the new garage. What do y'all think?